Amen. God is good. So let's get started with the word of prayer as we get started with our meeting. Father in heaven, as we invite your presence into this place one more time, we want to pray that you will bless us as we get ready to come towards Thanksgiving, Lord God. And we want to pray that you'll bless our meeting, Lord, tonight and give us your grace and your glory. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We want to welcome you here tonight. Oh, I tell you, man, there's no better place than this place called the Legacy Center. Amen. And brothers and sisters, we want to just get right into it. And we want to let you know that um, tomorrow, what night did I say? Tomorrow we'll have a meeting at seven o'clock. And then from Tuesday to Friday night, there will be how many meetings? No meeting. All right. And the only meeting we're having this week after tomorrow, it will be on Sabbath morning at 9.30 a.m. for Sabbath school and then 10.45 for our divine service. And then our new schedule for the next week will be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights, okay? So we're gonna have a wonderful time. So um, next week, is it, oh, this is this, it's a new week already, all right. So next week we'll be meeting Monday, Wednesday, and what, somebody? Friday nights only next week, okay? And we have a special study from you from the book of Hebrews, from the book of Hebrews. And we're going to talk about that and some other things. So we still got a lot to talk about, but we wanted to um, just respect the fact that um, Thanksgiving is coming. Some of you may be going out of town. And what we want to do is, um, so next well, next week, we'll be meeting Monday, Wednesday, and what, somebody? Friday. And then tomorrow, we'll give you the final studies for the Bible Institute so you can do it all throughout the holidays. And then hopefully, we want to get everybody finished with everything by Wednesday so that we can give you your certificate. And hopefully we will be able to know definitely which day, whether December 4th or the 5th, we're gonna have a special ceremony here at the Legacy Center for the graduates, amen? Amen. And before we get into the word of God tonight, we're gonna to ask our sister Daphne to come one more time. Let's give her a hearty amen. Amen. Let me take it out. Good evening. It is a blessing to be here again tonight and to see all the beautiful faces. Praise God for another opportunity to come together and study his word. Somewhere a song breaks through the air amid frustration, toil and care, merging a busy world to share a moment of peace god bless the song god bless the song the song that finds a restless heart or a weary mind and brightens the day when the sun won't shine, causing shadows to flee, God bless the song. There is a song that comforts when sorrows prevail. God's a young heart to a home 
homeward trail. Sometimes a song brings tears to your eyes, renews your faith whenever it dies. Oh God, bless the song that wings its way into some part of each busy day and causes someone to stop and pray for a moment of peace. God bless the song. This next one is entitled, No One Understands Like Jesus. I have found that to be so true. I don't care if they're family, friend, but no one quite understands like Jesus. No one understands like Jesus. He's a friend beyond compare. Meet him at the throne of mercy. He is waiting for you there. No one understands like Jesus when the days are dark and dreary. No one understands. No one is so dear, so near as Jesus. Cast your every care on him. No one understands like Jesus. Every woe he sees and feels. Tenderly he whispers comfort and the broken heart he heals. No one understands like Jesus when the days are dark and grim. No one is so near, so dear.
Amen. Ooh, God is good, is he? Is he? All right. Um, let's see which one is longer. Okay, I think this one is shorter. Amen. All right. We want to wish everybody a good evening tonight. Amen. All right. And tonight we're going to talk about Revelation, the 22nd chapter. We're going to talk about the last chapter of the book of Revelation. It's only uh, 21 verses, but we have a lot to cover. So let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, that you will send heaven down into this place. We pray that you'll make the right impressions upon every heart, that we may be impressed with the character that you would have us to have in order to be part of a blessedness in the heart. We thank you, Lord, for answering this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And brothers and sisters, the Bible gives us a commandment in the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48. Matthew, the fifth chapter and verse 48, the Bible gives us a command. Amen. And whenever God gives us a command, always remember that all his biddings are enablings. Do you understand this? Whatever he tells you to do, he will enable you to do. Do you understand this? He'll enable you to follow. And God will have a people, and he will have a people. And I thank God for that. Even though the masses will reject Christ and his truth, the Bible makes it very plain that he will have a people on this earth that will vindicate his character, and who will vindicate his name. As we said, um, tomorrow night will be our, our, our next meeting. And then, of course, throughout the week, we'll be preparing for Thanksgiving. And then, of course, on Sabbath, we'll be here. And then um, our new sketch will be Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. And yes, ma'am? No, there will be no meeting Saturday night. No meeting Saturday night. Uh, because of the holiday weekend, some people may be out of town. We don't want nobody to miss anything. Amen. So we'll be continuing our meetings on Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, on Friday nights. And those are some good nights, especially Wednesday and Friday, as we continue to study the word of God. And my appeal to each and every single one of you is to continue to come out and continue to bring somebody because we're going to go deeper and deeper into this wonderful word. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and verse 48, the Bible gives us a command, and understand this right here, that this commandment in Matthew 5, 48 is a promise to those who are born again, amen? And we want to let you know that God isn't playing, while God isn't playing with sin, we want to just give you some encouragement that whatever Jesus tells us, we can do. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 5, 48, the Bible says, be therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So the question is, can a man be perfect? Yes, because he said, be ye therefore perfect. If God knew that you couldn't be perfect, he would never tell you to do it. Am I right? Now, can we be perfect in our own strength? Absolutely not. Because we must receive the perfection of Christ. Amen. He lived the perfect life. And his perfect life is offered as a free gift. Where when we receive his perfect life as a free gift, we are saved. Do you understand this right here? And because we're saved, we're covered with his perfection. Thereby, we can grow in the perfection that we already have. Do you understand this? So how do we attain to perfection? We attain to perfection by faith. Amen? Amen? And so by faith, we receive his perfection. Amen. So God covers us with his perfect life. And then God enables you to live the perfect life that Jesus lived. Do you understand this right here? So if you are a child of God and you have received Jesus Christ as your personal savior, and you by faith have claimed his perfection and to replace your imperfection, and you have repented of your sins right now, you are accepted before God right now as if you live the perfect life. Amen. That's how you can be perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. But notice this right here. The Bible says, even as your father, which is where? In heaven. So he has to qualify because Jesus told the Jews that ye are of your father, the devil. So if a person is like their devil, demonic father, they're going to live an imperfect life. But if God is your heavenly father, that means that there must be a relationship. Amen. 
So every father has a relationship with their child. So we, as God's children, we are in covenant relationship with the Heavenly Father. So therefore, once we come into connection with the Heavenly Father, we are his children because we are born of the Spirit. And when we're born of the Spirit, what happens is it's the Spirit of God that lives in us that causes us to live a perfect life in Jesus. What do you say out there? And so when the Bible says, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect, he is definitely requiring complete submission to his will. Do you understand this right here? So let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 19. Let's go to Matthew chapter 19. Because there was a man that thought he was perfect. But Jesus tested him to show him that one thing thou lackest. And what happened was Jesus tested him and said, look, if you're going to be perfect, this is what you need to do. Do you understand this right here? And God is testing all of us on any point. Do you understand this? And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 17, did you have it? Matthew chapter 19 and verse 17. And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, and that is who, somebody, God. But if I will enter into life, if you will enter into heaven, he says, what, somebody? Keep the what? Commandments. Amen. So he said, if you want to enter into heaven, guess what? Keep the commandments. So that means that no commandment breaker is going into heaven. Do you understand this, right here? So that means that we must repent of our sins and accept Jesus. But look at verse 18. Verse 18, he saith unto him, which? Which commandments is it that, you know, I need to keep? He said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Do you understand this? And then he didn't cover the first four commandments because the Jews, you couldn't argue them down on the first four. They kept the Sabbath supposedly. They, took, they didn't take God's name in vain. They didn't bow down to graven images and they worshiped the true God, but that wasn't the testing point there. Do you understand this? This point the Jews had a problem was, they had a problem with loving their name. Do you understand this? And so they felt like they were the only ones that was going to be saved and everybody else was going to hell. So what happened was they practiced racism, prejudice against other nations. And so this is where the Jews fell short. But nevertheless, Jesus tested him and said in verse 20, look at verse 20, the Bible says, and the young man said unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. And the Bible says, what lack I need? So Jesus, so he sets himself up and Jesus gives him the answer. This is what you're lacking. And Jesus said unto him, if thou will be what somebody? Perfect. What did Jesus say? Go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure. You no, know, this is right here. In heaven and come and follow me. Brothers and sisters, following Jesus in this verse right here means giving up everything. Do you understand this? And God was testing him on this point. Now, this is what I believe. Well, before I go any further, the Bible says in verse 22, but when the young man heard that saying, the Bible says he went away sorrow, for he had many what? Possessions. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says in Revelation 3, because thou art rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, you don't realize your spiritual condition. You know, brothers and sisters, this man had a lot. There was nothing wrong with him being rich. But what happened was, is that Jesus tested him on the point of his riches and told him to give everything you have and give to the poor. Now, had he had said, you know what, Jesus, I'm going to do it. God may have said to him, like Abraham, you don't have to give it. Now I know that you love me, right? But probably he probably would tell him, he probably was meaning, but he can do it right now. And guess what happened? Had he had done it, he would have been perfect. You understand this, right? Here. Am I right? But what happened was, is that Rather than do what Jesus said, now, who was the one that was telling him to do this? It was Jesus. It wasn't no man, brothers and sisters. It wasn't no church, no denomination telling him this. This was the lovely Jesus. And Jesus is perfect in wisdom. And so if Jesus is telling you to do something, then you need to do it. Am I right? But what happened was, is that the Bible says he went away. And let me tell you this. There are many people asking God, show me what is true. Show me what the word of God really says. And then God sends you something. And what he's really saying to you is, if you look, you've been my child all along. 
But if you want to take this thing higher, this is what I want you to do. Do you understand this right here? Because he said, if thou will enter into life, he said, keep the what, somebody? Commandments. But this young man, he was willing to, you know what? The Bible does not say that he ever came back to Jesus. Do you understand this? So understand that there are people that hear this present truth and they get sorrowful when they hear that they need to keep all of God's Ten Commandments and that the commandments were never changed. Do you understand this right here? And people will leave sorrowful because they're rich in tradition and custom, but they're not willing to go all the way and they never come back. Do you understand this? Let me say this. This could be somebody's only opportunity to really receive the whole entire truth and to walk in it. And God is telling me and encouraging every single one of you to walk in the truth as you have the truth. Do you understand this? So what does the Bible say in Revelation 22 and verse 14? Revelation 22 and verse 14. Uh, what does the Bible say? The Bible says in Revelation 22 verse 14. The Bible makes it very plain. Jesus says, if you want to enter into life, if you want to enter into heaven, keep the what somebody? Commandments. So guess what, brothers and sisters? Though keeping the commandments does not save you. If you are truly saved, you will keep the commandments. Is that, is that fair, brothers and sisters? Because Jesus said in John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. Am I right, somebody? So if we love God, we're going to do as he said. No man can say he loves his wife and don't do anything because love is not a word, it's an action. Am I right, somebody? So we can't just love and word. Anybody can say they love God. I remember years ago, I watched this movie. It was about the werewolves. It was fiction. And it was this man that turned into a werewolf. He was killing people left and right. And come to find out, uh, one day, you know, in the movie, you found out who the werewolf was. It was the preacher at the church. And they said, do you love God? And he said, yes, I love God. And then he tried, to, and something happened in the scene to let you know that this brother was the builder. But brothers and sisters, that brother was the werewolf. And I'm here to let you know, bro, people can say you love God. If I say, how many you love? How many you hate God? Nobody gonna raise that. If I say, how many you love God? Everybody gonna raise that. But what happens is this right here. God gives us little tests. And the, the God gives us little tests to see whether we really love him or not. Do you understand this? And when God sees that you're ready, he allows you to come into a knowledge of truth. Now, for him, his issue was the last six commandments. But for this day, it's the first four. God says, look here, if you would enter to life, keep the commandments. And people say, which ones? He said, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. First commandment. Second, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. If thou will be perfect, I need you to keep God's fourth commandment. And you know what people do? People turn away song. And don't go back. But brothers and sisters, God is looking for those who are willing to follow him all the way. The Bible says in Revelation 22, before we go to verse 14, let's start at verse 1. Let's go to verse 14. Let's go to verse 14. Let's go to verse 1, because it's really in the beginning of the middle of the chapter. The Bible says in verse 14 of Revelation 22, it says, and this is in the King James Version, blessed are they that do his what? Commandments. That they may have right to the tree of what? Life. And may enter in through the gates into the where? City. So who are the only ones going into the city according to this verse? Only those that obey what God says. Am I right, brothers and sisters? So if that's what it is, then guess what? Whatever God is testing you and I with, for some people, it may be the Sabbath. For some, it may be just you not committing adultery. You understand this. For somebody else, it may be you not stealing and being a liar. Are you with me? It doesn't matter what it is, because if you break one, you broke it all. But some people it's just about being a messy gossiper. Am I right, somebody? And when you gossip and when you backbite, you are a murderer. Am I right, somebody? Murdering people's reputation. Do you understand this right here? If you're living in a glass house, don't throw, don't stone. So am I right? So what happens is it doesn't matter what commandment you break here. Every single one of us are being tested. Do you understand this? And all God says is, will you submit to my lordship? God says those that keep the commandments will have right to the tree of what, somebody? Life. So let's talk about this tree. Let's go to chapter 22 and verse 1. Let's go to the first verse. In verse 1, the Bible talks about this, the, these first verses, it talks about this tree of life. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and out of the land. And in the midst of the street of it, because it's going to be a new city, right? On either side of the river, 
There was the tree of what, somebody? Life, and the Bible says, and this tree bears 12 manner of what, somebody? Fruits, and yielded her fruit, how often? Every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the what? Nation. So notice we see in this verse right here, the Bible says that there's a tree of life. And how often will the tree bear fruit? Once a month. Why? Because every month people are going to pick from it and eat it. Do you understand this? And the tree of life, we first heard of the tree of life in the book of Genesis to where God had two trees. He had the forbidden tree, which God said, do not eat. And the tree of life. But notice this right here. When man sinned against God, what did God do to the tree of life? He surrounded it with angels, am I right? With a sword, why? Because if you cannot live in sin and yet live well, am I right? You can't break God's, because guess what? If God had not put the tree, of, if God had not protected the tree of life, then guess what? Man would have been the eating of that fruit and when living in sin for eternity. Do you understand this? And the tree was so potent and so powerful. The Bible says that men were living for 900 plus years. Do you understand this? That's how powerful the tree of life was because every time they ate it, it would sustain life. And the tree of life will be eaten once a month for eternity to always show that we are dependent upon God for eternal life. The reason why we die is because we do not have access to the tree of life. If you don't put a, 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 a battery, and if you don't charge your cell phone, your battery is going to go, your phone is going to go out, am I right? But as long as you keep it charged 24 hours a day, it will never go out, am I right? So as long as man was eating of the tree of life, then guess what? Man would have lived forever. And there's going to be so much fruit in that tree to where everybody's going to be able to eat of it and live forever. So once a month, if I say once a month. We're going to go to the new Jerusalem. I'm going to eat that tree forever. Do you understand this? And only those that keep his commandments will have right to eat it. Do you understand this? And the Bible tells you when we're going to do it. Let's look at the book of, let's go back to the Old Testament. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah the 66 chapter. Isaiah chapter 66. And we're going to look at verse 22 and 23. The Bible tells you when in the new heaven and the new earth when we will eat of the tree of life. So when we eat, the Bible says it will bear 12 manner of fruit. So the implication is once a month, we're going to be eating it. Do you understand that? So what happens is, is that only those who obey the commandments will have right to the tree of life. Do you understand this? And this is the reason why you and I have to let go of all sin because the devil is trying to disqualify each and every single one of us from eating of that tree. Do you understand this right here? I mean, God is very serious about it. Let's look at the book of Isaiah 66, verse 22 and 23. Do you have it? It says, for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Look at verse 23. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another. Notice this right here. And from one what, somebody? Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the what? The, the, who? The Lord. What this means is the new moon. How often is the new moon? If you read the Bible, the new moon, even the new moon today, it comes with how often? Once a month. And in the Old Testament, the one, the new moon was at the beginning of the month. Do you understand this right here? So once a month on the new moon, whatever that day is, the first of whatever month, the first of each month, forever and eternity, we're going to go to the new Jerusalem and we're going to eat of the tree of life. Do you understand this? And worship before him, as well as worshiping on every Sabbath. All of the all of the new earth will leave their homes because we're going to be building homes and we shall inhabit them. And then we're going to build homes and inhabit them and all these good things. And then when the Sabbath comes, everybody's going to fly to new Jerusalem and we're going to worship on God seven day Sabbath. Do you understand this right here? I mean, that's very clear. I mean, the Bible says this is going to happen. So what happens is this right here. We must prepare for heaven. What do you say out there? So let's go back to Revelation 22. Revelation 22. Now, the Bible talks about um, this place called New Jerusalem. The Bible talks about that we'll be eating this fruit. And I look forward to eating it. Now, will it look good? It will taste good. Amen. Now, look at verse 3. The Bible says in Revelation 22, verse 3, it says, and there should be no more what? Curse. 
but the throne of God and that the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall what somebody? Serve him. And the Bible says, and they shall see his what? Face and his name shall be in their foreheads. So when we get to the heaven, when we get to heaven, we're going to see his face. We're going to see what God looks like. Now, these pictures you see on the walls, we're going to see God face to face. Amen. And the Bible says that his name, his character will be where? In our forehead. It's his commandments. And God's going to have a people that's going to love him and serve him forever. Do you understand this? Look at verse five. And there shall be no night there. They need no candle, neither the light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for how long? Forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, the good news is, is that yes, we're going to go through some tribulation. Yes, we're going to deal with this beast power. The whole world's going to be on the side of the beast. But guess what? God's going to have a faithful few. Amen. That's going to be called, chosen, and faithful. Verse six, the Bible says, and he said unto me, these sayings are faithful and what, somebody? True. That means that you can take this to the bank. It's going to happen. And the Bible says, and the Lord God of the holy prophets have sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. And then it says in verse seven, behold, I come on somebody quickly, even though it's been delayed, it's still going to be quickly. Am I right? Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. My admonition to you, the things that you have learned as we study the book of Revelation. I want you to keep these things, believe these things, and put these things in practice in your life because it is going to happen, brothers and sisters. As you know, time is running out. And God is telling us, seal not, the Bible says, the saints of the prophecy of this book. But the time is at what? And we know what's getting ready to come. We know all things are getting ready to get chaotic. And guess what? The whole world is going to join up with the beast power. And the beast power is going to have a counterfeit plan to save this earth. Do you understand this? And the majority of the people on this earth are going to follow the beast power and go to church on his day and say that if we go to church on the first day of the week, then guess what? We can bring back temporal prosperity. We're just letting you know that it's going to be the mark of the beast. Brothers and sisters, do not follow the beast power no more. Do you understand this right here? God wants you to follow the lamb. Amen. Look at verse 9. The Bible says in verse 9, verse 8, excuse me, and I just saw these things and I heard them. And when I had heard them and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them that keep the sayings of this book. Worship who, somebody? Do not worship this beast power. Do you understand it? The whole point of the book of Revelation is in chapter 13, where the whole world's going to worship this beast. But what we're telling you is to worship who somebody? God. And the truth of the matter is, there may be people that may not choose to believe that what you heard is the truth, but it does not change the fact that it is, and that one day it's going to come. Brothers and sisters, do not let tradition do not let custom keep you back from following God no more. Do you understand this? Jesus says, go all the way with me and you shall know the truth. Look at verse 11. Verse 11. Verse 11 talks about it as if it's going on then. But it's really a prophecy for what's going to happen in the last days. Because one day, God is going to say, he which is what? Unjust. Let him be unjust what? Still. And he which is... Filthy, let him be filthy, what? Still, but thank God. He which is what? Righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let it be holy, what? Still, we have a choice. Are we going to be unjust and filthy, or are we going to be righteous and holy and follow God, brothers and sisters? One day, God is going to separate the wheat from the tares. And brothers and sisters, all the tares will be filthy and all the wheat will be holy. Do you understand this? And every day we're making the choice of which group we're going to be. God is calling for us to totally separate ourselves from the world. Do you understand this? And we're going to talk about that in verse 12. The Bible says that, behold, I come what somebody? Quickly. And my reward is what somebody? With me to give unto every man according as his works 
shall be. Do you understand this, Ray? God is testing this final generation. Do you understand this, Ray? And God is testing. I'm going to say it one more time. God is testing this final generation. Do you understand this? And whenever when he makes his coming, whatever decision he makes is going to be right. Do you understand this? And it's going to be based on your choice. Do you understand this? And the Bible says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Brothers and sisters, there's no one else but Jesus. Do you understand this? Amen. And God has a special message. Let's look at Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. Let's look at Revelation chapter 18. And we're going to look at verse 4. Now notice this. God is calling for a complete separation. Somebody say separation. He showed you the truth so you have no so He's showing you who the major players are so that you will have no affiliation with them. Do you understand this? Because we know where this bus is headed. If you put, say if there was a man who was a known child molester and you put children in his company, you know where that bus is headed. Am I right? Somebody's going to get blessed. Am I right? But brothers and sisters, God has revealed to us who this beast power is. And brothers and sisters, God said to have no fellowship with him. Do you understand this? Yeah. And thank God, people are going to obey this command. Revelation 18, verse 4. Do you have Revelation 18, verse 4? Yeah. It says, and I heard another voice from where somebody? Yeah. Heaven saying, come out of her my people. What is God saying? Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. God is calling for complete separation from spiritual Babylon. And really, we talked about Sunday worship coming from Babylon. God, in these last days, is calling all his children and all these denominations to come out of Sunday worship before it's too late. He was asked. And not only is to be a physical coming out, God says, I don't want you to even look like that one. Come out of her, my who? People. But the question is, what does Babylon look like? What does Babylon have on? Let's go to the book of Revelation 17 and verse 4. And they're going to give you a text in the New Testament, and then later on, we'll just do a full study on it. But I just want to hit it because we need to hit it. Revelation 17 and verse 4, do you have it? See, brothers and sisters, God sends a test to his children. For some people, for me, the first test was in keeping the Sabbath day. But when it was, without keeping the Sabbath, the first test for me was giving my life to Jesus. And let number two, not only that, number two, let go of the things of this world. Then number three, the Sabbath, and then God had been testing me all along, and he's still testing me. God still be showing me stuff. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm going to come out. Do you understand this? So let's go to Revelation 17 and verse 4. So God has another test. God says, come out of here, my people. But also God says, don't even look like Babylon. The Bible says in verse 4, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Nothing wrong with wearing purple and scarlet. But the Bible says she was decked with what? Gold and precious stones and what else, somebody? And pearls. She was dead down. Am I right, somebody? So what in the world does this got to do with Babylon? Well, brothers and sisters, I'm going to show you something. Of what God says, brothers and sisters. I don't want you to be looking like her. Now, we're going to allude to it tonight, and then one night we're just going to do a full core study on it. Let's go to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2. Because brothers and sisters in the Christian church, even though many people claim to be Christians, a lot of people do in Christianity still worship the God of this world. You understand? Brothers and sisters, you almost cannot tell the difference between a born-again Christian, a professed Christian, and a person out here in the world. But I'm just going to touch on this, and let me say this, like with everything, I don't judge nobody, because we all come from different walks of life, and God has to deal with us on different levels, on different things. But what does the Bible say? God says in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9, I had a student ask me last week, well, who wrote Timothy? I said, God did. That's what I said. 
through Paul, right? <laughs> 1 Timothy 2 and verse 9 and verse 10. How does God want his church members to dress? The Bible says in verse 9, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in what kind of apparel? Modest apparel. With that four revelation chapter 17, she was wearing the attire of a harlot. Am I right? Am I right? And you know what, what a harlot dress like. She shows her breasts. She shows stuff that she shouldn't be showing to nobody but her husband. Am I right? I'm all right. I'm all right, somebody. I mean, the women that have been singing up here, they ain't not dressed like boys. I'm all right. But if they had mini skirts and spandex tight pants, just showing their hips and stuff like that, folk be calling me from all over the world about this. What you doing? Let them, let them sing up there like that. Because we know that's the tire of a harlot. I'm all right. So the Bible says that women, as well as men, ought to dress themselves in what kind of apparel? Modest apparel. I can't be up here showing a six pack and wearing skin tight stuff, showing my muscles and my crouch. Talk to me, somebody. Am I right? That's not modest apparel. When I'm starting, when I'm dressing, you know, if I'm purposely dressing to be sexy, are you with me? Am I right? Am I right? Drawing undue attention to myself to where people wear tight stuff on purpose. Men do it too. Am I right? Why do they wear it? In order to accentuate attention and lust. Am I right? So men and women ought to be covered up and dressed decently. Am I right, somebody? Am I right? Watch this right here. The Bible says in verse 9, in like manner that women adorn themselves with modest apparel, with shame facingness, and what else, somebody? So why we got to have shame in how we carry it ourselves. You got women and men who have no shame. Am I right? People walking around half naked, meaning they have no shame. So what happens is in modesty of dress, we don't even want to look like that harlot. Because that harlot said in Revelation, I sit as a queen and I am no widow and I should see no sorrow. She got a bold attitude. I'm all right. But God is calling for us to dress differently. The Bible says in modest apparel, with shame facing this, and what else, somebody? Sobriety. Then it says, not with. Somebody say not with. That means don't dress yourself with what kind of hair? Broad in here. What does broad in here mean? What happened was back in the first century, what happened was women were braiding their hair and putting gold and glitter. It was a show stopping hairstyle saying, Look what I got, ladies. The issue is not so much them braiding their hair, the issue is what they put in there. Have mercy. Have mercy. But not only that, it says not with broad in here or what, somebody? Or gold, hello, or pearls, or costly what? Array. But which become women as well as men professing godliness with what kind of works? Good works. God says, I don't want you adorning yourself with gold or pearls or jewelry. And I'm married. I don't wear a wedding ring. You know why? Because the Bible said not to wear jewelry. And what does Babylon have on? Gold and what, somebody? Pearls. And look what God says. Don't wear gold or what? Pearls. God says, don't adorn yourself with gold or pearls. To make yourself beautiful. I want you to make yourself beautiful by how you live. Amen. Let's go to Genesis chapter 35. It says the same thing in 1 Peter chapter 3. You can look at that later on. But let's look at Genesis chapter 35. I mean, the Bible, even, Jacob even goes in on his own family in this verse. And what I'll do is I have a whole study on this and we can talk about it. But what God is saying is he's calling for a complete separation. I want you even looking like Babylon. Have mercy. Now watch this right here. Genesis chapter 35 and verse 2. Do you have that? Genesis chapter 35, verse 2 and verse 4. The Bible says, Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the what kind of gods? Strange gods that are among you, and be what clean and change your what garments. That means that what you have on isn't right. So, what is it that they took off? The Bible tells you in verse 4. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, and all there was somebody earrings which were in their wear, ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak, which was my shepherd. If it had been okay to wear earrings and, and jewelry, he would have told them not to wear it. Do you understand this? And what does Babylon have on these things? And guess where the wearing of jewelry comes from? It comes from Babylon. It comes from tradition. 
Because we've been told the tradition dressed like this, but when Adam and Eve were, were created, they didn't have none of that stuff on. And God said, I want you to look natural. Somebody say natural. I have mercy. But I, I got another scripture for you. Can I show you another scripture? Can I show you another scripture? All right, now watch this. I don't want to say I forgot because I really didn't forget. <laughs> All right, so that's in Genesis chapter 30, I mean, Genesis chapter 35. Notice the Bible calls these earrings and these jewels strange what? And the Bible says, thou shalt have no other what, somebody. But hold on, you know, of course you may not be worshiping it, but when God tells you not to wear it, you do it after contrary to what he says, then you are worshiping it. Have mercy. Let's look at Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 28. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 28. What does the Bible say about tattooing? Because people put jewelry on their bodies and then people put tattoos. Notice the Bible says upon her forehead was a name for that person. And guess what? People are putting tattoos on their faces. They're putting it on their bodies. But what happens is a lot of people wear tattoos and didn't know any better. Guess what, brothers and sisters? God does not count it as sin. If you have tattooed yourself, even if you have one tattoo and you didn't know what I'm about to show you, it's all right. But God says, now that you know the truth, God said, I want you to tap me up no more. Let's look at Leviticus 19 and verse 28. Now, in Leviticus 19, 28, um, if you have another version of the Bible, it says tattoos. In the King James, it says in verse 28, and ye shall not make any cuts in your flesh for the who? Dead, nor print any what? Marks. Or even in the Hebrew, it means tattoos. Don't put any tattoos upon yourselves. But I am the Lord. God is commanding us. I want you to look completely different than all these people around you. God says, I want you to let the jewelry go. And God says, I want you to take the tattoo. In other words, don't get a tattoo no more. If you don't have one, don't get one. If you have one, don't put no more. Amen. Amen. Because one of the most popular tattoos is the one we wear right here. What's that called? It's called a tramp. What? Stamp. If I say, hey, tramp. That would be, that would be, and so somebody called you a tramp. And every woman needs to remember, you're not going to be 19 forever. You're not going to be 20 forever. You're not going to be 30. One day you're going to be a grandma. Are you with me? And a great grandma. And if God bless you, you're going to be a great, great grandma. And what happens is, I got, I got family members. Um, I got, I got a cousin. She's older than me. She's 52, and she has one. And I'm like, she's grandma my age. When she turned 70, like, man, girl, what about like that? You know what I'm saying? And the lower back tattoo, the tramp stamp, has a spirit behind it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It has a spirit behind it. So what God is saying is, I want you to let all that stuff go. Don't dress like the world. Do people wear tattoos today? God said, no, what did God say in the Bible? Don't do it. And, and notice Babylon had a tattoo on their head. Tell them who her name was. Am I right? Read Revelation 17, it tells you that. Now, let me show you one more text, then we're going to move on. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 3. Isaiah, the third chapter. God is serious about this. And so what you will find out is, is that God is a deal with this church on a whole bunch of stuff. And all this stuff came from the heathen. And people be like, well, that don't mean anything. Yo, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Can I show you? Can I show you something? Can I show you something? You got, you got a couple of minutes? You do? You sure? Okay, we'll see. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 16, Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 16, what does God say? I'm going to tell you what he says. He says, moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are what, somebody? Hardy. They don't have that attitude of 1 Timothy chapter 2. And walk with stretched forth next and wanton what, somebody? Eyes walking and mincing as they go, making them tinkling with their what, somebody? Feet. Therefore the Lord was smite with a scab, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And the Lord will discover their what, somebody? Secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away. Somebody say he's going to take it away. He's going to do what? Take away. That means they shouldn't have it on. Take away the bravery of their tinkling what? Ornaments about their feet. And their coals and their round tires, like the what somebody? 
Look at verse 19, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs, the headbands and the what, somebody? Tablets and the what? And look at verse 21, the rings and the what jewels? And do people wear jewelry on their noses today? Yes, God says, I'm gonna take it away if you don't take it off. And the changeable suits of apparel, et cetera, et cetera. Brothers and sisters, God says he's taking all this jewelry off of his children. Do you understand this? He wants to take it off for the truth. But in the last days, God says, I'm cleaning the house. Do you understand this right here? So what should you do? Oh, you thought the Sabbath was a test? God says, I don't want you to change how you dress. Now, you got to wear clothes, right? So but nobody's telling you to walk around. You know, am I right? You got to brush your teeth. Am I right? You better. Am I right? Um, you you got to wash up, right? And put some stuff on you so you won't be smelling funky. Am I right, somebody? Am I right? So God wants us to use good common sense. But what happens is what God is telling us is, I want you to stop wearing those things that I told you not to wear. And you know what it is? It's only a test. Somebody say it's only a test. Because God says, watch this right here. If you give the jewelry to me, I'll give you a golden crown. Hello. Talk to me, somebody. But are you ready for one more thing? Are you ready? Preach. Bro, preach. Oh, people, don't, man, people don't want this. This, this is hard. This is hard truth. Am I right? But it's right there in that holy Bible. Am I right, somebody? Amen. It's right there in that holy Bible. Do you understand this right here? All we're trying to do is just help people to come up a little bit higher. Amen. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a one-minute break. Can I take a one-minute break? Because I got to go to the computer and change it. Amen. All right. Can I, can I take a break right quick? Okay. Give me his break. All right. Oh, you, you're not. All right. So I'll take Dust of the ground, right? So they were ready, ready. Amen. All right. Now, God said, don't eat the forbidden fruit, right? So if God said, if you do contrary to what God said, that's a sin. Am I right, somebody? Now, if God had told, if they did not know that it was wrong to eat the forbidden fruit, would that have been a sin? No. Right. So watch this right here. So what is God's will on this? Let's look at this right here. All right, here we go. What does the Bible say? Now, contemporary English version says, quote, I would like for women to wear modest and sensible love. They should not have fancy hairdos or wear expensive clothes or put on what? Made of gold or what? Somebody. And guess what men are doing right now? You know men are wearing pearls right now? I did, did this past semester. I saw one guy wearing a cross. Well, that's kind of, yeah, is he feminine or something? I said, oh, guys, what are the guys wearing pearls? So brothers and sisters, if it's wrong for a woman to wear pearls, it's wrong for a man to wear pearls too. Because God said, don't put it on. Do you understand this? So he said not to wear the jewelry. But watch this right here. Now watch this. We're going to show you this right here. First Peter chapter 3 says, quote, be not adorned with outward ornaments of your hair braids or what? Gold jewelry. Do not adorn yourselves outward by braiding your hair and by wearing what? Gold ornaments. God says don't do it. So Let's just kind of get past all this or get past all this. I mean, you know, I, this this was my this was one of my favorite. This was one of my favorite 
person back in the day, okay? And you should you meant to be um looking like me, and I'm all right, society. Oh, I hate to say it, but this was this was this was my prince before Jesus became my prince. And this was my favorite album to have mercy. But I always want the words he dressed like a girl for like that. Come on. This is him a couple of years before that. I mean, he looked like a girl here and he looked masculine here. And then on American backstand, I was just thinking the sugar was perfect. You get me? He had that earring in there right here. I'm like, is he just even? And he, I'm not gonna lie to you. I was such a big Prince fan. I said, even to this day, I said, he could not have been homosexual because he had too many beautiful women around him. He did. Maybe that was a maybe that was an act or something like that. But in this video right here, um, he dressed like a girl and stuff. It was a front. Hopefully, it was a front. But listen to this: the dress and its arrangement upon the person is generally found to be the index of the man or the woman. Men ought to look like men. Am I right, somebody? Oh yes, indeed, baby. Because let me tell you this right here. I mean, and God bless you. So I'm gonna read that one. So God said in Genesis 35, not to wear the strange guys and stuff like that. But brothers and sisters, now notice what the Bible says. Now we got to talk about the pagan origin. Somebody say pagan origin. The pagan origin of the wearing of jewelry. Just like Sunday worship, the Bible says in Judges 8 24 that they had golden earrings because they were what? Israelites. They were wearing it because they were what? And the Israelites were pagans. Have mercy. But I'm going to get to what I want to get to right now. All right. Now, somebody is like, Dr. O, you're married. How come you don't have a woman in your home? Because the Bible said not to wear children. Amen. So when my wife and I exchanged my vows, we didn't do no ring ceremony. You understand this, really? Because we know what the Bible says. I'm going to show you something. Are you ready for this? I don't think you're ready. I think you're ready to go. Okay, Doctor, oh, I got to go to work tomorrow, right? All right. You sure you want me to go? No matter how hard it is, as long as it's in the Bible, right? I don't know if you're learning that. All right. Now watch this video now. Let's talk about the origin of the wedding ring. Where did the wedding ring come from? Where did it come from? I'm tell you where it came from. It came from astrology. Someone say astrology. Astrology is the worship of the sun, the moon, and the stars. In astrology, the thumb was correlated with what planet, somebody? Okay, the thumb was correlated with what planet? The index finger was what? The middle finger was what? And the ring finger was what? All right, now. Where did Sunday worship come from? It came from the worship of the what? The sun. Now watch this right here. So when they wore jewelry back in the days of old, that's why God said, don't put these strange gods on. But they would put them on specific fingers. And I'm going to show you some. I'm going to show you some. Now this is going to be the bottom right here. Now I wasn't planning on doing this tonight. All right. So I want you to come back tomorrow. Amen. All right. You will be here. Okay. Now the wedding ring originated where, somebody? Where did it originate at? In Babylon, the cradle of where? Civilization. The most ancient ring discovered there is in the shape of the eternal serpent. Who did Satan use to deceive Eve? The serpent. The image of the serpent biting his what? Tail before the circle of the ring is an ancient satanic symbol. Now, so with the serpent, I want you to listen to this. This is this is real. I'm not sitting here lying. I'm not lying. now, brothers and sisters. I know I hit I hit I hit that Sunday worship hard. But I've got to tell you this. This picture here is called an Ouroboros. Somebody say Ouroboros. I had one of my students. I told us the satanic some of my students said you are wrong, God. That's Ouroboros. Ain't nothing satanic about it. And guess what? I said I'm gonna do a study. I went on the internet and I found out that the Ouroboros, and I typed it up on Google, and guess what website I found? It was called the Church of Satan. Now I went on there for a second, I ain't gonna lie. Stay on the website. I went there and they said on the website that this is a satanic symbol. So if the Church of Satan said it, then I know it's gotta be true. So what happened was, let me tell you this right here. Now, look at this right here. This is called the Insane Development of Christian Doctrine. Now, this is from a Catholic priest. That says, quote, oh, I'm almost done. The use of temples and these dedicated to particular saints and ornamented on occasion with branches of trees, incense lamps, the ring, and what's about it? All turned to the east are all of pagan what's about it? Origin and sanctified by their adoption. 
into the church. Brothers and sisters, a lot of traditions have come into the church, and the wedding ring was one of those. But here's the vow shell right here. In this book right here, in this book, I'm almost done. In this book right here, this is written by Dr. Samuel Bakioki. And what he said here was true. To break it down, what he said was, in paganism, in some worship, what they did was, in order to get the power of the God in which they worship, they wore rings on certain days of the week. On Sunday, in honor of the what God? They put a diamond on a ring of what? Because gold was the color of the sun. On sun, on Monday, silver was the color of the moon. That's why they wore silver. Watch this right here. So this right here, I gotta get to this right here. This is powerful. The wedding ring, the gold wedding ring, is a symbol of you know who. Why? Because they work on this finger. And what happens when the sun hits the diamond? It's it what? It turns bright with Satan's origin. What's Satan's name? What does Lucifer mean? Light bearer. So the wedding ring is bearing light. I mean, I'm just telling you the truth, brothers and sisters. To get the control of the sun, they wore this, and this is the most common the uh wear diamond uh ring. But notice this ring. So I got to do this. So watch this right here. The if if there was the worst form of jewelry to wear, it would have to be a wedding ring because of what it represents. It's worse than a numbers ring. Even if God says that he's gonna take it off. Now hold on. So, somebody said, Well, that don't I've had students argue me that that doesn't mean that. Does it? Now I'm gonna show you this. Now I'm gonna ask you, anybody that's young enough, does this mean something? Does it mean something? If you see a man or a woman wearing it, I'm not even gonna tell you what it means. You want me to tell you? Oh, okay. I'm gonna get in trouble. There's women up in the aisle. Now. You know what that means? Where, huh? It's a, okay. What happened? You, you want me to say that? Okay. 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 What happened is, is I know I got myself in trouble, right? All right. Let me just say what happens is, is this for your tongue ring. Usually, sometimes I say usually, because it may be that one person who may not be doing it for that reason. What happens is, and when people get intimate and stuff like that, they use that. For stimulation purposes, for the other sex, that's all I'm telling you. That's all. Thank you. Okay, I said I said it the best way possible. Now there are people who are too messy. That's not why I'm here. Somebody say what? The Bible says it stains the very appearance of evil. If I had one on, you know, if if, if a young person saw me with one on, do I have one on? No. But if you saw me with one on, you would know what I'm into. I'm just gonna leave that in. So just leave it alone. All right, it's worse than it's worse than that. I mean, it's okay to wear one piece of jewelry, but it's okay to wear as many as you want. Mercy, it's worse than this. They needed to be here. They needed to hear this message tonight. Amen. Amen. And if a person's wearing it, I'm not here judging nobody. I mean, tattoos. Let me tell you this right here. It's out of control. Look at this tramp stamp right here. I mean, it's out of control, man. This got so bad where they're wearing it on their tongues and stuff. Look at that. That's probably Photoshop. Uh, but, but notice this. But this is this is not photo. I've seen this man on the video, and God don't want you putting all that stuff on your body. People want like lizards and stuff like that. I mean, it be basketball players. I mean, they really popularize and stuff like that. Um, it's really and people do it for fraternity sororities. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says you should not make any cuts in your body for the dead, nor print any tattoo marks on yourselves. For I am the who somebody. The Lord. So what happens is we have been born into a world full of customs and traditions that are not of God. So we adopt them. But what happens is God is merciful. Somebody say he's merciful. So what happens is in his mercy, layer by layer, he says, look, I want you to share this, share that, share this to be in accordance with my will. So what happens is if anybody wears jewelry or tattoos or whatever, I'm not judging you. You understand this right here? I don't want you to come back. You understand this? It's just that, hey, see, this was never an issue for me, but the sad was. And I almost didn't do it. You understand this right here? But one day I opened my Bible, I said, okay, God, I'm going to do it. Oh, this is so serious. I think I need to hit one more thing. Can I hit one more thing? It's okay for me. Okay. I'm just going to get in trouble anyway. I'm just going to say it. All right. 
So let's talk about this right here. Now, I got to show you the, the Bible says, and ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which I have cast out before you, but they committed how many of these things? All these things. What you will find out, people were doing it back then like they were doing today. And God has to deal with that. And you will see instances where he had to meet people where they were. Do you understand this? But as we get close to the end of time, he said, look, I just want you to shed some stuff off. Amen. I mean, you love Jesus, right? I, I'm, I, I'm the same person after this message that I was before. Do you understand? I'm a very loving, kind, and grace oriented person. Amen. But let me ask you a question. The Bible says, don't make any cuts in your body for the dead. Do they put tattoos for the dead? You know that. But let's talk about this last one. What about makeup? Now, I got to deal with because the men wear makeup too now. If a woman can do it, then a man can do it, right? Mm -hmm. And the question is, what about makeup? Now, usually this is considered a woman thing. But I got some good news for you. We're going to send somebody free. How do you spell makeup? If you make up a story, if you make something up, what is it? I made it up. It's what? It's a what? Uh oh, watch this. All right. How old do you think this woman is in this picture? She looks like she's in a pretty good Sixty. I mean, she's sixty now. But when I took this picture, she looked a lot younger. Did you hear that face natural? Yes. Now watch this weird. All right, let me get past this. Okay. Now watch this. The wearing of makeup. And what kind of makeup is that on the all seeing the eye horns? Come on, that's called what? Come on, what do you call it today? I know. It came from the same origin as Sunday worship. See, the wearing of jewelry, Sunday worship, and makeup is all hired together. And so they worship the sun, they believe in the all seeing eye of horns. That's why you see all these Egyptians wearing it, right? Right. And when the people ran it, you have mercy. But what happens? I'm going to show you something. Now, what kind of makeup is this? Is the eye shadow mascara or whatever? What happened was, what kind of feather is that right there? He talked about it. And because in sun worship, if you read the Bible, they used to worship birds and all kinds of animals. What happened was the peacock feather was the feather dedicated to the sun. So to order to, order to mimic the sun, they will wear makeup on their eyes. But hold on now. When we say makeup, we're talking about modern forms of makeup. And I know for women, this could be a struggle. I know it can be. But God has said, I want you to come clean. You know, tattooing is permanent cosmetic makeup. Tattooing is, you, you tattoo yourself, you're putting makeup on your body. So if God said, don't put permanent cosmetic makeup, that means you should put temporary cosmetic makeup. False eyelashes. Mascara. You're going to get me in trouble, but let me tell you this right now. <laughs> Listed. You know what? If this was a class, I would give you bonus extra credit. If you can go on the internet and find what the origin of lipstick is, you will find out why is it red and why is it on her lips. If I touch this women's ears, I'm, I'm not going to say it. But let me tell you, it is disgusting and it's licentious. I'm just going to leave it like that. Not even one man can tell you what it is. Finger and toenail. <laughs> Color contacts for anointing fake. Put these fake contacts with your girl, your eyes are not great, but your eyes are not great. They are baby brown. Amen. Eyeshadow, foundation, all that stuff. Rouge, and then lip injections. Have mercy. Nobody, hope nobody's doing that. Little Kim done messed herself up. Have mercy. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you this right here. Who is the first person in the Bible mentioned to wear makeup? Jezebel. And they have a magazine with Kim Kardashian called Jezebel Magazine. Look at this. 
The Bible says in 2 Kings 9 30. And when Jehu was coming to Jezebel, because he's about to kill her, right? Jezebel heard of it and she did what to her face? Painted her face, have mercy, and turned her head and looked out of the window. Why was she doing it? Because I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you the real reason why. This is going to blow your mind. Because Jezebel was a witch. And part of the witchcraft was, was to wear the makeup to ward off evil, but evil came to her anyway. And God said, I don't want you wearing that stuff. Have mercy. Now, I'm going to show you something now. I asked you a question. Now, look at this text right here, Jeremiah 4 30. And when thou art spoiled, what will thou do? Though thou coldest thyself with what? And though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with what? And danger thou make thyself fair. Thou lovest with despise thee, they will seek thy what? Like, God says, don't wear no ornaments of gold. And you should not. Wear makeup. Now, for those that do, I know people are close to me that do. You just gotta pray for them. Amen. But watch this right here. And who's this right here? Babylon. And she's dead with the very thing that God said, Don't you deck yourself. I was even on cover this tonight. But God said, Do it anyway. Now, the Bible says, Come out of her by who? Now, who is this right here? You know, the, real, the original baby was a black woman. You go through your research that original baby group was a black woman. And you see a picture looks just like her, and she was high yellow. Now watch this. Look what we better do got on. She, she, she got that short skirt. She got all the stuff we seen out the radio. Look at that little dog hanging on her. What is that saying? That's the kind of thing you're going to track. Have mercy. All right. Watch this for you. Look at this. Look at her looking at your husband. <laughs> Oh man, now look at this right here. This girl, she every, everything was fake. Everything was fake, or everything was fake, brother. Sisters. Now watch this right here. If you spell makeup, M-A-K-E, what? P. If you make up a story, you are telling the world. To make something up is also doing what? Cover up, which is what? That is the nature of the random makeup. It is a lie that women as well as men. We are on their faces saying, this is what I mean. It's a lie. You're lying, sister. Look at this. Man sues wife over makeup. Wow. He married her. And he like, this is what you, this is what I really look like. Look at this. Is makeup the seven? Is it the seven? I mean, yes, you may look a little bit more enhanced, but a lot of men want to see what you really look like underneath that mask, honey. I'm all right. All right. I remember years ago, Sister, Sister Keller sitting over there saying, you got to give us hope. Now, not that she was wearing it. You got to give ladies some hope. So makeup is really what somebody? Which is saying what? Now, who is this right here? Alicia Keys. Now, listen to this right here. Do you know Alicia Keys for a time stopped wearing makeup? She said, now this is what she said. Okay, if you don't believe the preacher, this is what she said. She said, I hope that God is a revolution because I don't want to cover up anymore. Not my face, not my mind, not my soul, not my thoughts, not my dreams, not my struggles, not my emotional road. She said, this on its found the various kinds of masks we wear for fear of not being accepted. She talked about one of her new songs, When a Girl Can't Be Herself, where she says, Who says I must conceal what I am made of? Maybe all this Maybelline is covering my sins. Hello. Hello. If you don't want to hear from the preacher, God will let your favorite artist tell you that. Amen. All right. But somebody say, But in response to Sister Kelly years ago, she didn't remember this. I got a recipe. With 10 healthy steps on how to break a low to skin like this without it. You want me to show you? Okay, all right, I'll show you. Okay. Now, you know I can't wear it. Am I right, somebody? Because you'll never come back again, right? Now. If you saw me putting this on my eye, you're like, what's Dr. Lee doing? All right, number one, make a full surrender to God. Amen. And ask him to fill you with the Holy Ghost to where his glory can shine through you. Amen. But let's get this. Okay. Exercise in the West somebody. Number three, three deep breathing exercises every day. Now, here's what you need to do. And this is a known fact. If you drink, if you got off of all juices and all sodas and drank water every day, it will clear your skin within 30 days. 
Am I right? Amy? Am I right? Am I right? Not that she did it, but I'm just, just pointing her out. Amen. Drink eight to 10 glasses of water a day. Amen. Because what happens is the largest organ in your body is your skin, and your skin has pores. Am I right? Am I right? Deep breathing and exercise will help. Number two, number four. Number five, all you ladies know how to do this. Facial cleansing. Go to bed, go, go to bed. Uh, what's it called? Bed, 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 bath and beyond, or whatever the store you like to go to. Wash morning and evening with a pure, gentle cleansing agent. Then use a natural face mask once a week with oatmeal, black cat, molasses, honey, and barley rice. Put it all together. I might say, what? People put mud on their faces. Am I right? I'm saying you put food on your face. At least you can eat it after you finish. Don't you eat that mud? Am I right? And so what happens is honey and barley, like so what, or, or barley, like, so what happens is you can put a mask over your skin and stuff like that. You can do that. And then, watch this right here. How to use the facial mask, hot contrast in the face, leave on for only 20 minutes, I say only 20 minutes. Warm rinse and end with the cold compress. And what happens is just once a week, somebody say once a week. I guarantee you start singing it. And then, watch this right here. Pat or gently rub. Do not over cleanse the face or over stimulate by excessive rubbing and scrubbing. Amen. Amen. Now, anyway, let me get past this. All right, let me get past this. Now, you know this is the truth. Do not do oily, especially fried, sugary, or excessively naturally sweet or salty food. Eat plenty of fresh green foods daily or have a green drink twice a day. Do not eat in between meals or late in the evening. This practice poisons the entire system with the fermentation. This is one of the major causes of pimples, acne, and constipation. I mean, just how you eat, you understand this, right? And then, are we ready for this one? Go to bed well. This will generally remedy dark circles under the eyes. For puffing issues, cool cucumber slices over the eyes for 15, 20 minutes. Brothers and sisters, you can use cabbage to stop inflammation. Yes, that's right. Use aloe vera. Somebody say aloe vera. You can go to Walmart and get it today. Inside and outside, this is one of the best plants for skin. One of my friends, Daughter had third degree burns on her body. My friend put some olive oil, some type of aloe vera, and put it on her skin. And within a matter of time, her skin came back to me. So this thing is real. And last but not least, somebody say smile. Smile. Frowning causes wrinkles faster. Cheerfulness and the love of Jesus will beautify your face naturally. Amen. Amen. I remember it's daily coaches telling me. Saying that women need to smile at men and then they don't. If I come y'all women don't smile at the command. You know why? Because if you smile at a man, a man won't think you like him. Am I right? Amen. So don't be smiling. He's like, hey, how are you doing? Oh, she's in love with me, right? <laughs> what about men wearing makeup? I can say it now because everything is getting bad. It's getting bad, y'all. If women, if men, if women can't wear it, man can't wear it. You stand over here and look at this. Imagine that was your husband or your boyfriend or your little brother and stuff like that. Have mercy. And man, who, who, who now? Every, people who are older know who this is. Who is this? I used to wonder when I was a child. I said, "Who? Why did you call him Lord Jr.? It's not a man, but it was." No, saying now. But before Lord George, you had Flip Wilson. Some of you know Flip Wilson. And the alter ego, which was Jeremy. Never yeah, going to forget, I saw Flip Wilson. I was five years old. I saw Flip Wilson doll and I saw Jeremy in the back. I said, oh, is this him where? I turned that Flip Wilson doll over to the man inside. I knew something was wrong with that. I was five years old. I knew something was wrong with that. Look at this right here Eddie Murphy. All these men dressed like women. Have mercy. And do you know this man, this woman, this, this is not a man, that's a woman, that's a man. That's a man, Ru Paul. Oh yeah, that's him for going Look, look better than some women at first. You go, all these single men you're looking for a wife, you gotta have to ask for a birth certificate, am I right? 
I want to give you a birth certificate. I want to see what your name was. It better say F, yeah, not M. Yeah. If it says M, yeah, get the step in, right? It is, is, this, is this wrong? Is it wrong? Now, according to society, somebody said he can do whatever he wants, and that's what makes him happy. Well, he can do what he wants. That's against the Bible. I'm all right. But in the hall, is this is this wrong? Then this gotta be wrong too. It's gotta be wrong. It's yes, it is. I don't care what anybody just because it's because it's your favorite movie. What does the Bible say? This is my last text. Night shall a man what kind of garment? A woman's garment. Let me come, let me come tomorrow in a skirt. Let me go wear that skirt. Can I wear that skirt tomorrow to the bathroom? That'd be crazy for me to ask a question like that. Can I kind of go? I'm going to go on the skirt or something. Oh, you want to go on the skirt? I know what I'm going to wear we'll tomorrow. And get a wig tomorrow. And say, so my name is Shub Dia, not her Dia. I'm, I'm a Dia's cousin. Oh, all y'all, nobody, nobody be here no more. So I knew that Dr. Old guy, so I'm going to swap with them. Brothers and sisters, men are to look like me. And women are to look like women. The Bible says, neither shall a man put on a who's garment? Woman's garment. For how many? All except for time up here? All that do so are an abomination. And I never will forget when I first saw Tyler Perry. I was here in Huntsville and visiting with a friend. And this was back in 04 when his first movie came out. I said, I want you to see it. I said, I I, could, I couldn't even get into it. You know why? Because I had a problem with a man dressing like that. How many ladies are married? You married me, right? If your husband started doing something like that, I'd be getting the phone call. You please tell me what my husband's <laughs> Can you talk to Jim, please? I don't do that. going to do it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're a baby. Sister Creech. And your husband started doing something like that. You will be with the, with the umbrella. I'm all right. You are not the man that I married, right? Brother Hodges, Sister Hodges, your husband started doing that. Would you like that? What if he was getting paid millions of dollars? <laughs> this isn't right. So what, the, what, so what we got to do is we got to follow what the Bible says. I'm all right, somebody. I'm all right. The Bible is the only book in the universe that condemns cross-dressing. It's the only book in the Bible, brothers and sisters. It's the only book that condemns cross-dressing. Brothers and sisters, if the Bible, but you know what's going on right now? Oh, oh, the same thing. You're right. But then yes, right. But let me share this with you, brothers and sisters, because you got women looking like men. But what happens is this right here. Let me tell you this right here. Yes. You know something wrong. wrong. <laughs> he either brother creature is sick or he did something he should not be doing. <laughs> but y'all been married for nearly 50 years, right? 50, no, almost 60 years. This ain't no time. But you know what? You know, listen to this. Remember Bruce Jenner? That dude at 60-something years old decided to change his name to Caitlin and become a woman. Why would you wait? I mean, come on, that's something people do. But you know what? Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. I, I was really trying to get out of here 30 minutes ago, but the Holy Spirit wanted to talk about it. Let me share this with you. Do you know that studies have shown that most, the majority of people that get their sex changed regret it? I got a friend of mine, his name is Dan. He is converted, but he was living as a woman for years and he chopped certain things off, but he repented. Amen? We thank God. And yeah, they make people let like their children. Oh. You know what? Jesus got to come. Am I right, somebody? He's got to bring this thing to an end, brothers and sisters. Oh, we cover so much stuff. We cover so much stuff. All right, let me let me close with this. I know I've covered so much. I, I meant to let I meant, I meant to get out early tonight, but um, all kinds of stuff. All this kind of stuff. 
Oh, it's just too, it's just too much. It's just too much. Yeah, I know. All right. What, what, what we got to do? All right. What's the whole theme of this whole Revelation seminar? Follow the Bible. Amen. Just do what God says. Amen. Amen. If we do what the Bible says, we will not be lost. Amen. So you know what I got to do? I got to, I, I didn't finish the chapter, so I got to finish the chapter tomorrow. I'm like, can we finish Revelation 22 tomorrow? All right. Y'all enjoyed it tonight? Did you learn something? Thank you. Amen. Amen. And I know, you know, we cover a lot of stuff here. Man, I tell you, somebody asked, how come the preachers ain't teaching it? You know why? Because they're not being taught. Because it's not popular to do so. They're scared. That's what they scared. That it'll be crickets in their congregation. But anyway, I know you love God. So look here. What we're going to do tomorrow night for our Bible Institute, we're going to give you the formatting studies for the weekend for the, um, holidays, and then Monday, Wednesday, and Friday will be continuing. Let's all stand for prayer. Oh, this is a good study tonight. Yeah. So you know tomorrow got to be better, amen? <laughs> I, would, I tell you, I was not planning on talking about none of this stuff tonight, but God has, God leads. Let us pray, Father, and you may the spirit of truth rest upon us. Be with us, Lord, as we continue on. Bring us back up tomorrow night in Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.